you've watched some of my earlier videos, you know that I am a fan of retro gaming. And I'm also a fan of this Hyperkin Trooper 2 joystick, which gives me a very authentic Atari experience when I'm playing those games. But I found a problem, and in order to solve it, I went out to Reddit, I got some ideas, but honestly, I had to kind of figure it out for myself. And I wanted to share the solution with you. You see, unlike most joysticks, this Trooper 2 doesn't have that many buttons. There's just one D-pad, basically two fire buttons. There's two buttons here and two buttons here. That's not as many as you see on most joysticks or game pads. And that can be a problem. Another problem that I came up with while I was using the Trooper 2, and it didn't do this before I plugged in the Trooper 2, and then after I plugged in the Trooper 2, it always did this is if there was a game that required the keyboard, if I was doing an Atari 800 game and it needed the keys, then there were problems. Uh, pressing the H key always just reset the whole game. And pressing the F1 key to try to go into the options also went into the RetroArch menu and that didn't make a lot of sense to me. I found out the solution is that the emulator wasn't in what was called focus mode. There are two modes that these emulators work in. One is where you can control the emulation settings using the keyboard, and one is where the keyboard sends its information straight to the game. I wanted the one that sent the keyboard information straight to the game because I wanted to play Star Raiders, and in order to do that, I needed to use a whole bunch of keys. The solution was to try to turn focus mode on and off, but that was harder than you would think. You see, in order to use focus mode, turn it on and off, you use the scroll lock key on your keyboard. And the laptop that I had didn't have a scroll lock key on it. So I had to figure out how to do that. I plugged in another keyboard that did, and I was able to just turn off focus mode, and then I could put the keyboard away, but I, I had to do that every single time, and it, it wasn't working for me. So had to figure out what to do in order to maybe have a more permanent solution. What I did was create something called a pad to key profile. I did this by plugging the Hyperkin Trooper 2 in as joystick one, and then when it was recognized as joystick one, plugging in my regular game pad as joystick two. I needed both because I needed to be able to use some of the buttons that the Hyperkin did not. So okay, I'll walk you through how to do this and show you that you can use any of the buttons on the Trooper 2 and map it to scroll lock. I mapped the second trigger, which made a lot of sense to me. You're going to be using the gamepad, not the Trooper 2, to make these changes because you'll need the buttons that are on the gamepad. Start by finding the game you want to add the profile to and pressing and holding the south button. That's the bottom one in the four button cluster. This is going to get you into the game options screen. Just go down to pad to key profile and then press that south button again to get into the pad to key profile. You'll see all the buttons displayed and you have to be looking at player one, that is the Trooper 2. Now the Trooper 2 doesn't have all these buttons, that's not the point. You want to find the one you want to remap, in this case I'm choosing the right trigger, and choose the south button again. Then arrow up and over until you see scroll lock is highlighted, and once it is, press the south button again. Finally, Either use the start button or arrow down to save to save all your changes and everything will work great. I wasn't able to capture the message, but you will see when you push the button, it says focus mode on. And this will let you play Star Raiders or any game that needs a keyboard. Once you've got that key mapped to your second button, then all you have to do is push it when you go into 
a game that needs it, make sure that pad to key profile is set up for that game and you'll be all set. It won't interfere with anything else and you should really not have a problem. What sort of problems have you encountered when doing retro gaming? I'm kind of curious to see what you came up with and what the solutions really are. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, and leave your comments below and tell me everything that you've come up with in order to make your retro gaming experience better, especially if it's something that really applies to 1980s gaming, which tends to be my wheelhouse. That's it for the Middle-Aged Hack today. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again next time.